Okay, so once you have your sketches and you've decided which shape you want to radiate around your vessel, you are going to use your chipboard cutout, roll your clay through the slab roller, and I actually thinned my clay out further after I rolled it through the slab roller because I wanted my pieces to be a little bit thinner and the slab roller compresses your clay. So then after that, if you want to thin it out a little bit more, you can. So I need to figure out how to divide this up equally. And so I have to find my exact middle point on the top of my piece. So since this is three inches across, I'm marking the one and a half and then I'm just going to make sure that my line is perfectly horizontal and mark that. So I'll mark that one and a half again. And then I've got four equal sections marked with my pin tool. Now I need to divide this up even further. And however much you want to divide it up is up to you. So you could add just one more line in between each. So you have a total of eight. Or I could divide that up even further and end up with 12 sides. So it's up to you. But you need to figure this out before you actually start adding pieces. So I could end up with that many if I want more space in between my pieces. But I think I want to actually add extra, so I'm going to lightly blend those marks out and I'm going to divide up these sections even further because I feel my piece will have more movement if I have, if I have more slabs. So I'm going to split those into smaller sections. Make sure they're equal. So at this point, I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I'm pretty happy with that. And then I can start to cut out my pieces. Sometimes I'll use a rubber rib just to kind of smooth out any marks that are in the slab. Uh, sometimes my slab picks up marks from the table and I want to smooth those things out, send the rolling pin over it again just to clean it up. Lay my pieces out and actually start to cut. I'm really trying to keep the pin tool straight up and down. I tend to accidentally kind of tilt it so that I end up with these beveled edges that I don't necessarily want. So try to keep your pin tool straight up and down. Hold your chipboard in place while you are coming through and cutting out your pieces. And you don't have to have negative space in your slab pieces. I just wanted negative space in mine. So I just have to be extra careful that I don't let these dry unevenly. And I definitely want to have all of my pieces cut so they can start to dry and get closer to that leather hard stage.
I just have to be very careful that I don't accidentally wreck my pieces. Peel them out very carefully. Make sure you keep your pieces flat. You don't want to bend them. You don't want to get fingerprints in them. So now that my pieces have stiffened up a little bit, I've left them sitting out for about half an hour. I am going to smooth out those sharp corners. We don't want any sharp, sharp edges. So I can do that with my finger. I'll also do that with my sponge. And you can play around with it a little bit. Um, some students like to pinch the edges out to give them some texture. I like to round my out and actually leave some areas thicker and thinner so it has like line weight variation. So just by messing around with the edges of your slabs, you can create something a little bit more interesting than just a cutout shape. You could do something like texture each one of these slabs. You could score and slip coils on the surface to do something interesting. They don't have to just be a plain slab. So a little bit of water, really focus on softening those. I'll do more of this once it's built, but I want to get these as close to smooth as possible. No extra little overhangs of clay. And I'll just go through and I will work each one of these. I do use my sponge to smooth the edges too a little bit. You just don't want to overdo it because your sponge can pull your grog to the surface. So you have to be careful. And I'll just continue to move through every one of these and prep them for the actual build. <laughs> 